Hi my loves, it's Ro, welcome back. Today we are doing a get ready with me while I answer your questions. So this is the finished look. This is not a tutorial because I honestly was talking so much during the video. I was not doing much makeup and I finished the questions about 20 minutes before I finished my makeup. So I literally stopped halfway through my eye look. I was like, all right, there you go. Let me go finish this. I'll be right back. If you're interested in hearing some juicy questions about if I would ever leave Adam, about if I've ever had plastic surgery, if I've ever cheated, you guys went in on this video. And you know me, I'm an open book. I was happy to respond. So I answered those questions while I did this look. I got a request from my Shein haul from my dear friend Jody on that video. She asked me to wear this red dress because it was one of her favorites in the haul and wear it with a red lippy. So I figured why not? We did kind of a neutral, <laughs> neutral for a Jersey girl, a brown eye to go with it. If you're interested in the answers to all of those juicy questions, then just keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this really painful, hopefully one shot deal. Now let's get to the questions and the makeup. Let's put my hair up while we do this. I just had to flip everything around. I was facing the other way and the fireplace is over there with the metal around it. I don't know what to call that thing but it was giving such a glare off of my lights that I had to flip everything, so now I'm all discombobulated. There it is. I'm just looking for a hair clip to pull my hair out of the way. For you guys that watched my videos last week, the air conditioning is broken in my house. We had a reprieve. Yesterday was kind of on the warmer side. The sun was going in and out of the clouds. Today was a little warmer too, so although it's still a little bit hot, it's not excruciating. <sighs> Sunday and Monday are supposed to be awful so i'm trying to film a few videos today while i can without melting so that's why i was able to film these get them in and then you know i had thought the other day if i need to i can film in my car i guess so do you hear the birds out there they are loud okay first question have you ever cheated on a boyfriend before really good question i've gotten cheated on quite a few times before i've never actually cheated no but in college, I was dating this guy for a year and a half and he started to just treat me wrong and I never really wanted to see it. And then I was working at an after hours club. I talked about it in my early 2000s video when I did an early 2000s makeover to show you guys the length of time it's been since Adam has been gone. That was a fun video to make. But I talked about how I worked at an after hours rave club and I worked there with this guy who was a bouncer. He really liked me. And then I started to like him back. So did I cheat on my boyfriend? No, but I broke up with my boyfriend to start dating that guy and it actually didn't work out. It's kind of a messed up situation because I was like, all right, I don't want to be with you anymore because I want to be with him, you know? And then here's a really funny story. I talk about this guy that I dated on and off for about 10 years. When we were together, he would cheat on me anyway. He always had an eye for younger Brazilian girls, supermodel girls. And he gave me a complex. That's why I have a lot of issues that I'm still trying to get over about how I look and my age and all of that stuff. That's where a lot of that stems to. He made me the most confident in the beginning of our relationship, the most confident I've ever been. And then towards the end, because a decade spanned, he made me the most insecure, which is awful. But anyway, we were kind of on at this point. We had just gotten back on. And I used to go to this bar by his house a lot. And I would go with my girlfriend, my really good girlfriend, because she was dating a guy that worked there. While we were there, I started talking to a bartender and he was so, so cute. And he was such a nice guy. <laughs> we hung out a couple of times. Did we hang out? We talked on the phone a lot. I don't remember if we hung out, but I would go to the club and I'd see him a lot. One night I go to the club and we were all leaving. We were going to an after hours bar. As we're leaving, the guy that I was in love with for 10 years, on again, off again, we're walking this way down the street. He's walking this way down the street. And I'm like, Psh, I don't care. He's acted like he didn't know me before in the past, so whatever. As we are approaching one another, let's say X's name is Joe, which is not. But this guy, bartender guy, was like, Joe, hey. And Joe was like, 
oh, hey man, how have you been? It's been a little while. And I just looked at my friend like, it's my luck. It's my freaking luck that the two of them would know each other. So the one and only time I kind of tried to play two guys at the same time, they knew each other. Clearly I'm not cut out for it. The next question, oh, nobody's holding back any punches. Are your boobs real? Have you ever had plastic surgery? So yes, my chest is natural. I am blessed in that department. I have a large chest, but I also have hips, a butt, thighs, and a thick lower body. So I'm curvy. I'm really skinny on top and I'm curvy on the bottom. I actually talk about that more in my assumptions video, so we'll leave it there. But have I ever had plastic surgery? Sort of. I, I mean, yeah, I guess. I had my nose fixed. I had a deviated septum. I had my nose fixed. My nose does look different than the nose I was born with. The bridge, the bottom part, he took out a little bit of cartilage, but look at my nose. Like it still sucks. So I developed after that first surgery, I developed a bump on my nose right here. So I had this and then a bump and it went straight down. It's called polybeak syndrome. And that's because your nose literally looks like a beak, like poly got a cracker or poly want a cracker or whatever that is. So I, my sister actually went back to the surgeon because we both got our noses done. She developed a bump up here. I developed mine down there and I had to go get that bump shaved off and he took out a little bit more cartilage because my nose would go to the right. The cartilage down here went to the right. Clearly he sucked and my nose got botched. I made a whole video about it. I'll post it up in the cards all about how I got a botched nose job. That's the, my extent of, whoa, my phone just fell. Are you okay? Okay, we're still going. I just asked my camera, are you okay? I meant, is it still filming? If you could only see this setup. So that's my extent going under the knife. I have had Botox and some fillers. When I was 28 years old, I worked in internet marketing. I worked with this guy who developed a beauty blog. And back then, this is way back then, there was no, was there a YouTube at that point? 28, so let's see, 42, 32 would have been 2010, 2007, 2000. I think that was the year that YouTube came out. So there really wasn't any such thing as YouTube makeup girls. That wasn't a thing yet. So he developed a beauty blog for his girlfriend. Well, him and his girlfriend broke up and he still had this beauty blog that was actually really successful. So this other girl and I worked in our office and she was a brilliant writer. She actually has written novels. She was in school for her master's or maybe her PhD in literature, or whatever you got your PhD in for, for writing something along those lines. So she took over his editorial and I did his fitness editorial. Got a contract with a doctor who worked in a medical spa in New York City to have one of his editors go there and get free Botox as long as we wrote an article about it. So I got Botox in my forehead at 28 years old. My forehead was really wrinkly because he was only gonna do one part of it and he was like, oh, you could use some more. Not being a jerk, but I had lost a ton of weight at that point in a not healthy way. I was taking all kinds of diet pills. So I kind of, my skin kind of looked like I was sorry if this is triggering to anybody, but my skin kind of looked like I was on meth. It was like a methamphetamine based diet pill that I got underground by Crooked Doctor story for another video if you guys want it. I looked bad. So the doctor gave me my Botox and I wrote the article about it. It was a really good article. I sent it to Adam because I was so proud of it. And he goes, you're the only person that could get me to enjoy an article about Botox. So that's how well written it was, which was such a compliment because he's very well written. Anyway, after you get Botox, it doesn't last forever. It lasts for about, on me, at least three to four months. Everybody's different the way your body's gonna absorb it. I know people who can get their Botox to last for a year and I am extremely jealous. After three or four months, when your wrinkles start coming back and I'm very, very expressive, that's what started it too. So as I'm staring at screens, especially because that's what I do for a living, I work on a computer, I could feel this all starting to get wrinkly and it hurts, it gives me a headache. So, Got more Botox. And then as you get older, you need more. Actually, they say the more you do it, the less you're gonna need because those, after a while, those muscles kind of relax themselves. They forget how to work, but I needed more and more and more as I got older and in more spots. So like under here and here. And so, yes, there's a dirty little secret. Got my lips done. I don't know if I have much left in there. I guess a little bit. My upper lip is really, really small in comparison to my lower lip. This is not a beauty video, so let's just go with that. I got some Botox, I got some fillers, I got my nose done. The end. You guys are 
good with the juicy questions today. So this one is, have you ever been jealous of someone's husband getting out? Be honest. <laughs> Why do you guys think I lie? I'm always honest. What's the point in doing a channel if I'm gonna lie to you? Have I ever been jealous of somebody's husband coming home twice? Honestly, twice. Twice in 11 years, you gotta give me a little credit. The first time, I've told this story before, so I'm sorry if it's a repeat. I can timestamp where the next question is, but I always tell it in a different way, so. When I first started going to see Adam at McKean, he moved there in May. I would go once a month or every two weeks at that point, and I would always see this one girl. We developed a nice rapport, so we didn't talk really outside of visit. We didn't exchange numbers or information or anything like that, but we would talk when we were waiting to be processed and when we were walking in and out of visit. Here it is September, and I asked her as we were leaving, when's the next time you're coming? Am I gonna see you next month? And she said, oh, this is my last visit. He gets out in 10 days. Adam had moved from a high security penitentiary, Max. Most people don't get out at those places. And if they do, they have pretty long sentences. I never had the experience of being friends with somebody whose loved one was getting out. So when she told me that, I felt like somebody punched me in the stomach. I remember specifically, we were walking out of the back room where the visiting room is, down outside, it's about 50 yards, to the front building to be processed out. And we were about halfway and they make you stop about a quarter of the way left. So about three quarters of the way down that 50 yards. So the guard can go in, get clearance. They lock the door, they leave everybody outside. They get clearance to open the door. This way they do that because the cops in the visit room or the control room, wherever can say like, I'm fine. Nobody's holding me hostage. It's a fine situation. You can open the front door so they can be let out. I was waiting there and it took me those probably, I don't know, 10 yards or whatever it was at that point for me to kind of collect myself. And I'm very good at playing things off. But I remember after I got that twinge, I was just like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. That's so exciting. And then we said goodbye. We went our separate ways and I got in my car. I thought to myself, I don't like the way that felt. How dare I rain on somebody's parade? I'm not a jealous person and I've never been a jealous person and I'm not going to start now. And ever since then, except for one other time, I genuinely have felt nothing but love and excitement for people when their loved ones are getting out. And I always celebrate with them. I chose this walk of life, so it's not really comparing apples to apples. For me to get mad that your loved one is getting out, first of all, it's not my style to get jealous, but second of all, it's not right. The second time was somebody who was really evil towards Adam. He basically came out and said multiple times that he wasn't gonna change. He was ready to get out and hit the street again and he didn't care that he was leaving his wife who waited for him for 10 years. He was gonna leave her stuck in a revolving door of being a prison wife. Number one, number two, he told him that he could never be faithful to one woman. So yeah, it was wonderful that she was waiting on him, but he didn't care. He was gonna get out and he was gonna do what he wanted to do. He was gonna hit the street. He was gonna sleep with whoever he wanted to sleep with and she would have to either deal with it or she could leave, but he knew she would never leave because she was an insecure girl. I always said to Adam, please, I don't care how long it takes, but get out before him. And of course he didn't. I mean, that guy's been out for many, many years, but that one stung a little bit. Other than that, total love and celebration for everybody. It's not in me to be jealous. Okay, next question is, what were you the most insecure about as a kid? Is it still your biggest insecurity as an adult? So I think as a child, I was most insecure about the fact that I was really, really shy, really shy, painfully shy. I remember, here's a story. I can't swim very well. As I got older, I could swim a little bit better, but when I was younger, I couldn't swim at all. I was petrified of the water until very recently, actually. So I was at sleepaway summer camp, which was cult camp. Did you guys watch my cult video about how I was raised in a cult? That is not a lie. That is not clickbait. That is the God's honest truth. I will link it up there, but I talked about cult summer camp in there. It was summer camp put on by this crazy cult. And I think I need to do a camp hell, we'll call it video because it was awful there. Anyway, so there were swimming pools though, and horses. That's where I learned how to ride a horse the first time. Not that I'm good at it or I've ever been since, but there were things like the pool, horses, canoes, lakes, then games and all that kind of stuff. So at the pool, you had to get a badge for your swimming level. And the color of your badge was 
the area of the pool where you were allowed. So if you had a blue badge, you were allowed anywhere in the pool and you were allowed in the deep end and you were allowed to dive off the diving board. If you had a yellow badge, you were allowed to go up to whatever it was, five feet, let's say. And then if you had a red badge, you could only be in the shallow end. So the way that you tested for your badge color was that you had to jump into the intermediate area and you had to tread for at least a minute and then maybe do laps, whatever else it was. But I remember specifically treading for a minute. Now I'm seven years old, so I'm not five feet tall. And they had us all lined up by age and grade. And I was in my line and I was too shy to tell them that I couldn't swim. It was like first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. And everybody in that row, the number one of them would jump in the pool and tread for their minute. That next row of people would go, the next row of people would go. When two girls in front of me went, I started to cry. And then when the next girl went, I started to cry even harder because I was petrified, but I didn't want to say anything. I was too shy. And as I was next, now all the counselors are looking at me and they can see I'm having a breakdown. And the counselor walked up to me and she said, what's the matter? My voice was quivering and I was like, I can't swim. And she said, oh my gosh, okay, honey, come with me. And they put me someplace else. I think they automatically gave me the red badge where I could only stay in the shallow end and play as long as I could touch my feet. And then I was so shy later that evening, the other girls were asking me what happened. The other girls in my little grade that I shared a cabin with. And I was like, I started to have an asthma attack because I was so embarrassed to say I couldn't swim. Anyway, so I think I was the most insecure about being shy. And also I had such anxiety about getting in trouble. Go watch the cult video that I would get really nervous about things like losing my homework or not doing my homework in time, getting bad grades on tests. And it all stemmed back to me being shy and not outgoing. So that's probably what I was most insecure about as a child. As an adult, I still am very shy and I still am very insecure about being shy, but I also know I have to come out of my comfort zone and push myself out of my comfort zone and how to act in a lot of situations. I think what I'm more insecure about as an adult, and this is so sad and this speaks for so many people in life, is I'm more shy about my body now, especially my thick legs. I'm, I'm really, really, really insecure about my knees. I've, all of my sisters do, we have chubby above the knee fat and then my ankles because I have cankles and I hate the movie Shallow Hell because they invented that term and everybody uses it and I just hate them. And there's literally nothing you can do to make them better. You could lose as much weight as humanly possible and you'll still have them because it's genetics and bone structure. So people make fun of people all the time for that, but it's not my fault. It's how I was born. It's my father's side of the family. All the women on my father's side of the family have very thick ankles and it's just how we are. So that's it. I mean, life could be worse. I always tell myself, although I don't love the way my legs look, they've carried me for tons and tons and tons of miles. They work. They have gotten me from point A to point B and I'm so grateful for that and for them and I'm not going to focus on the fact that they're thick. And I always say to my sisters, we joke around, I'm like, hey, at least our ankles are so strong because they're so thick that we've never sprained them before. I've never had a sprained ankle in my life, although I've Let's knock something. But I've rolled my ankle hundreds of times, but I've never sprained it because I feel like it's so thick it doesn't break. The next question, did you start YouTube to make money? Nope, I started YouTube to share my story and to help people who are in my position. Everybody was obsessed with everybody's wives, but we as prison wives got a bad rap. So that's why I started it. I have not made much money on YouTube, honestly, for the amount of hours that it takes to film Get ready for a video, film a video, and edit a video. I've edited videos for days before, weeks. I could tell you this, just this morning. I did the death row video where the woman who was treated awfully at the viewing after her fiance was executed. It took me, I started last night. I filmed that video yesterday. I think I edited for three hours yesterday and then I edited from nine o'clock this morning till 4.30 this afternoon. And then to upload it was another couple of hours. So that was one video, you guys, one video. And so if I'm making $100 a month, what am I making per video? What am I making per hour? It's like inmate wages, you know? So it drives me nuts when people say things like I'm profiting off of Adam's sentence. I'm not whatsoever, whatsoever. I've never made a profit. Now here's a caveat. I have to start somehow being compensated for my time, otherwise, it's a waste of my time, right? I mean, I'm helping you, but also 
There is no shame in a financial gain for living your purpose. Otherwise, it's a hobby and it's a fine hobby, but I could also have other hobbies, you know? So you'll see because I don't have a huge amount of subscribers. I don't have a huge amount of views on my videos. So per video, I'm making what? $8, which is literally a dollar an hour. So if that, sometimes it takes me more than eight hours to edit a video. So you'll see that I'm starting to do a little bit more of affiliate stuff and sponsored stuff. And I mean, I get a few dollars for that, but it's something. YouTubers get it all the time. Hate about making money and da 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 da, but let's call a spade a spade. It's a job. I basically have two full-time jobs, but I'm getting paid for one. I talked way more than I did makeup. So the next question is, if you had a daughter, would you let her be in a prison relationship? <laughs> oh, half of you are gonna, you are going to come for me with this answer, but hell to the na to the na na na, no. Absolutely not. If she was a grown adult making her own decisions, there's nothing I could do about it, but I've had this conversation before with Adam. Actually, he's the one that had the conversation with me because I was pissed off in the beginning at my parents for not accepting this and blah, blah, blah. And he said to me, if we had a daughter, there is absolutely no way in hell I would ever let her allow her to be this in this type of relationship. Why? Because I know the guy that I was in the past and what I did to my ex and how awfully I treated her and the things that I was doing in here. And I know that me now, I'm the anomaly. I am not your average guy in here. So yes, although there are some good ones, I would never want her to take that risk of being with one of the 90% or maybe 99%, who knows, of the not so good ones. So to answer your question, if I had my way or my say, I would not allow it. I have half an eye done, <laughs> not even. And I'm on the final question, which is good. I just talked a lot with my hands in this video and we never finished. So this question is, would you ever break up with Adam if you get to a certain age and he's still in prison? I don't know. I have no idea. I say all the time that I am in this day to day. I have not felt like that so far. I think that he's the most incredible person under the sun. I don't foresee it. Doesn't mean it's not gonna happen. Doesn't mean that one day I won't wake up and say, you know what, this isn't for me anymore. I just can't do this anymore. It's been too long. I feel like I've wasted my life and I've gotta go. But at this point in time, I don't feel that. I can't definitively say if that'll never happen because let's be real, that happens every day to people. Let me finish my makeup really quick and then I'll come back. Okay guys, there's the finished look. I found some magnetic eyelashes on Amazon. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't like the way they turned out. I feel like they're lifting. Jodi asked for this red dress, which obviously I'm not wearing the right bra, but YOLO, it's 7.45 on Friday night and I have no place to go after this. It's just all being washed off and I'm changing out of it. So I did get up my Adam necklace because I think it goes beautifully with this dress. And I got a little carried away with my red lippy that she asked for and I did a little bit of an ombre. So that was fun. There it is. I love you guys. If you like this kind of video, let me know. We'll do more Q and A's and get ready with me's in the future. If you wanna see another get ready with me while I answer your questions, just click that video there. If you're not already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Click that little circle there or you could always do it by clicking the red box below. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.